Hey guys, it's Chris here and one of the most searched and asked questions on the internet is whether or not we're in a housing bubble. Everyone's comparing this rapid price growth to 2008. So in this video, we're going to break down what a housing bubble actually is. We'll compare the historical similarities between 2008 and today. We'll touch on how the cost of construction plays a role in all of this. And lastly, we'll touch on where prices are going from here. So to start off, housing bubbles are when prices accelerate faster than what can be explained by the fundamentals. This generally happens when there is a run-up in housing prices fueled by demand, speculation, and excess spending to the point of collapse. Many people believe we are at that point right now because of the crazy bidding wars that are causing people to spend fifty dollars to $100,000 over asking price. To give you an example of how crazy this market is and how fast prices are accelerating, in August of 2020, not even a year ago, I bought a house in a suburb of LA for $689,000. Here we are in almost July and this property is now worth approximately $850,000, give or take a little. So in approximately 10, almost 11 months, the property has gone up in value about $161,000 or approximately $16,000 per month. At first glance, it sure seems like we would be in a housing bubble, but I caution you to be skeptical whenever you hear that narrative. People have been saying the market will crash since 2011 and every prediction has been proved wrong over over and over and over again. Eventually they will be right. But just because someone says they're an expert with a crystal ball that predicted 2008, that doesn't actually mean they have any idea about what they're talking about. In reality, most of the time they're trying to get views or to sell you something so that they can make money. For the housing market to come down in price from where it is right now, we would have to at least reach or get closer to the point of equilibrium. So to explain, equilibrium is when housing supply supply and buyers are equal. If there was 100,000 homes on the market, then we would need 100,000 buyers at that same time to be in equilibrium and keep prices stagnant. Equilibrium is important because once we shift past equilibrium in either direction, it's really easy to predict what's going to happen with the housing market. For example, instead of 100,000 buyers and 100,000 homes, what if we had 50,000 buyers and 100,000 homes? It's simple supply and demand. It's economics. Price prices would come down substantially. And if it happens fast enough, let's say in one month, this happened, we went from 100,000 buyers to 50,000 buyers in one month, that would be what many people would call a housing crash or correction. Now the question is, where are we in terms of supply and demand right now? Well, right now, according to the National Association of Realtors, we are 5.5 million houses short and that number is only getting bigger and bigger as millennials start to reach home buying age. So for equilibrium to have and home builders would need to be able to build 5.5 million homes and not sell them to big money funds who are adding gasoline to this fire by coming in, buying all of them and turning them into rentals. Fixing these kinds of supply problems is not something that can just happen overnight. They've been trying to fix these problems for years, but the COVID-19 shutdowns, the failed policies at the Federal Reserve, and the supply chain disruptions that have been happening like crazy lately have just amplified this problem more than ever before. Because it's clear that we won't reach equilibrium through new construction for the foreseeable future, maybe ever, the alternative to bring down the market would be similar to 2008. There would have to be some external factor that comes in and affects the supply and demand for housing. Some examples would be interest rate increases by the Federal Reserve on mortgages, massive foreclosures that just flush through this country like crazy, or a wave of unemployment that causes people not to be able to afford their mortgages anymore. More. In 2008, we reached equilibrium and then passed equilibrium because of the subprime mortgage crisis that allowed banks to lend money to people who had absolutely no business of qualifying for the home that they were buying. People working average nine to five jobs were now claiming they ran side businesses that made them an extra twenty to fifty thousand dollars or more per year they weren't actually making that money and as you can see this was a huge problem and it came to a head as many people went into default on their mortgages because these people were doing interest only loans and other craziness once that ran out and their mortgage doubled per month they could no longer afford their payments which led to a massive foreclosure wave in this country that brought crazy amounts of supply to the market but the problem is this excess supply wasn't met by 
by eager buyers. It was met by no one. And because there was no one there to buy these homes, prices went into free fall. They dropped nearly 50% in some areas. This differs from today because the home buyers in today's market are some of the most qualified home buyers in history. Most of them are bringing at least 20% down payments with some who are even bringing 30%, 50% or more. They're also verifiably making three times the monthly payment. This is not 2008. It's a terrible comparison to make. In today's market, you have to show a lot of proof that you actually make the amount of money that you say you're making. They don't do stated income home loans the way that they used to anymore. Also, a huge deterrent from mortgage foreclosures is equity. The more equity you have in your house, the better position you're going to be in if you can't make the payment for whatever reason, because you can just sell the property and walk away from it no problem. You have enough money to cover the market dropping 10% and you also have enough money to cover the commissions and other costs that are associated with selling a home. In 2008, homeowners had nowhere near the amount of equity they have now. A lot of people were coming in with low money down payments and interest only loans, which was a huge problem because they couldn't withstand selling when the market shifted. Just to use me for example, if for some reason I can't make the payment on that house that I bought, then I'll just sell it and take the $300,000 in equity that I've accumulated so far and no big deal. This is not 2008. 2021 is not the same as 2008. The next thing I want to touch on is construction costs because the more expensive it is to build a home, the higher prices will go and the higher they will crash. Let me explain. Let's say an average house in the United States costs $300,000 to build and currently on the market it sells for $400,000. If the market was to crash, 99% of the time housing prices won't drop below what it costs to build a home. And the reason for that is because smart money investors will come in and buy up as much real estate as they can if that happens. If prices do drop below replacement costs like they did in 2008 through 2011 in a lot of areas, then it's a fire sale for investors because we know for a fact that homes can't sell under the cost that it takes to build them for very long. The importance of this is that we're creating the highest price floor in history. If prices were to crash today, they will not crash to 2008 prices ever again. They'll crash considerably higher than ever before and many people People will probably still think they're way too high in a lot of areas. The housing shortage and crazy prices is a huge problem that has even gained attention from the Biden administration as they aim to include some funding to fix this problem in their $2 trillion infrastructure plan. The president's plan would invest $213 billion to preserve, retrofit, and create more than 2 million affordable homes for low and middle income Americans. One important thing to note is that the $15,000 housing credit that Biden campaigned on was not included in this proposal. And in my opinion, it was probably a smart move because that $15,000 would only amplify the demand for housing because now a huge percentage of Americans would have a down payment for homes in certain areas, but there's nowhere near enough supply. So what's gonna happen? prices would just continue going higher and higher and higher. It would be a huge problem. You're giving people a 5% down payment on a $300,000 house. A lot of people can make that happen. The biggest thing that's keeping people from buying homes is the down payment. And if you give a bunch of Americans a down payment, you're adding more people to the housing market who are trying to buy homes supply and demand. That 5.5 million house shortage would probably be more like 6.57 million homes. So in my humble opinion, this isn't investment advice. Nothing in this video is. But I don't see a crash coming in 2021, even through 2022, and maybe even 2023 and longer. A realistic scenario that I could see happening is a housing correction. Maybe a 10 to 15% drop if interest rates get raised considerably higher than what they are right now. Right now, they're around 3%, give or take. If they shot up to 4% or maybe even 4.5%, we would expect to see housing prices come down considerably. But with the demand, there is a situation where even though the interest rates go up, with everything that's happening, we could just be at price stagnation. These prices that we're at now could just be flatlined instead of just rocket shipping to the moon. There is a scenario that interest rates go up 
and housing prices stay pretty much the same. So I want you guys to be aware of that. With that said, in my opinion, a 10 to 15% housing correction isn't something that's worth waiting on the sideline for, especially with as high as inflation and appreciation is right now. If you wait on the sideline for a year, two years, or if you're one of those idiots who waited on the sideline since 2011, you missed the boat. 2011 was the best time in history to own real estate. If you listen to one of those guys on YouTube, one of those guys who said he predicted 2008, there's going to be a second wave. Prices will drop even more. You missed the boat. I hate to tell you, you missed the boat hard. 2011 was a great time to own real estate and people said the market was going to crash. I think right now is a great time to own real estate and people say the market's going to crash. Eventually, they're going to be right. And then they're going to say, oh, Chris, you're a freaking idiot. I'm not a freaking idiot because I'm not one of those people who's going to wait on the sideline forever. If you listen to my channel and you come watch my videos, we're not just looking to buy a primary house. We're looking to buy one, two, three, four, 10, 15, 100 houses, retire early, live off the passive income and never have to work again. So with that said, if you run the numbers, it makes sense. It cash flows. It's in a good area. All of the fundamentals make sense. There's good jobs, there's population growth, there's everything that you would want to see in an area and the numbers make sense right now today with these great interest rates and everything else, why wouldn't you buy it? Maybe the market drops. Let's just say the market drops 50%. The rents aren't going to drop that much. The rents aren't going to drop 50%. And if you buy it the right way where you're still making like tons of cash flow on these deals, because that's what we're trying to do, even if the market shifts and drops 50%, you still make money. It doesn't matter. You're still going to have that cash flow to get you through that rough patch. So with that said, I'm buying houses right now, looking to buy a deal pretty soon, maybe in a month, two months, three months. I have a house in mind that I'm trying to buy. With that said, Market could crash, we could be in a mini bubble, but I do not think we're in a 2008 bubble where a 2008 like recession is coming. And I feel bad for a lot of people because they're hoping it's gonna crash. They're priced out of this market. They've probably been waiting since 2011 and they're saying, well, this is not fair. No one knows when it's gonna crash. So just to clarify, I'm not saying it will or it won't. I'm saying fundamentally, it doesn't look like it will, it could, but don't be one of those people who gets left holding the bag and in five years, these houses are worth two, three hundred thousand dollars more than they are today. And then you're even more screwed. Don't be that person. So if you guys found this video informative, then I hope you will consider subscribing and hitting the bell for more information dropped multiple times a week on real estate, stocks, crypto, and all things personal finance. Also, if this video did provide you value, then it would greatly help my channel if you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you gave this video a share to someone who you know who might find value in learning more about this crazy housing market. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way through and I will see you guys soon.